Okay, I'm here today with the Orion Auto Tracker and the 114 millimeter reflector. And I'm going to show you how to set it up today for some solar outreach. Now, if you've ever done solar outreach, you know that you have to spend a lot of time keeping the sun in the field of view. You have to come in and keep readjusting the scope. And with the tracking unit, you don't have to do that. It'll keep it in the field of view the whole time. The problem with that is a lot of tracking units need alignment stars, and you just don't have that during the day. Now with this unit, I can show you how to track the sun using uh, a set of setting circles and altazimuth values from a planetarium app like Sky Safari. The good thing about that is, let's say you're sitting here looking at the sun and a cloud gets in the way. You're tracking. When that cloud clears, this still has the sun in view. Makes your life easier. Everybody has a good time. That's the point of outreach. Now let me tell you about what you're going to need. So what you're going to need is a solar filter. I like the film because it gives a sharper view than glass in my opinion. You're going to need a pinhole finder. And I've got a blog post on how to make one out of a broken Easy Finder 2. You're going to need a wide field eyepiece. I'm using a 17. You're going to need to make some setting circles for your base. I used the circumference of the, of the base and lined it with a ticker tape type setting circle. I measured the circumference at about 29.4 inches. You're going to need a reference point to dial in those setting circles. And you're going to need a planetarium app like Sky Safari to look up the altazimuth values. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to level the base. Once you're level, go ahead and look up the sun in your planetarium map and have it centered so you can look up the azimuth value when you're ready. Go ahead and loosen the clutches. Use your pinhole finder to put the sun in the field of view. Go ahead and center the sun in the eyepiece. Okay. Look up the values and it says it is at 227. So I'm going to loosen my setting circle here and move it so that it reads 227. Okay. Lock those in place real easy. Now, verify that you've got the sun still in the view. If you know your uh, latitude, then you know where Polaris is. So let's put it on zero azimuth. Swing around here, I'm at 32 degrees latitude. So I'll put that in on the altitude. Lock the clutches. And turn the unit on. Make sure it's beeping. It's tracking. Now I'm going to swing it around to the sun. Center it. And I'm good to go. That's all you need to do. Now because this unit stops tracking after 30 minutes to save battery power, you're going to have to periodically check to make sure it's still tracking. And so every once in a while at a solar outreach, I'll uh, come over here and turn the uh, tracking off by pushing the 1 and 2 buttons and then turning it back on to get it tracking again. I'm good for another 30 minutes. And you know, I, every once in a while, every 15-20 minutes, I'll come over turn it off, turn it back on again, just to keep things going. Now, here's a little bit of bonus material. If you move the scope away from the sun so you're not catching any sunlight, and take off the solar filter, look up your values for uh, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, stars like Vega, Arcturus, Sirius, Procyon, Altair, those bright stars. If you can dial those in with your setting circles, you can find those during the day. And let me tell you, if you're at a star party, that impresses the heck out of people. They had no idea that you could find these things during the day. So, 
hopefully I've given you a lot of good information. I've got a blog post again on how to make this pinhole finder. I've given you the measurements for the setting circle. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.